do you have a handful of favorite plants? So for me, for example, with garlic, I love garlic. Uh, when I was a kid, I would get a lot of uh, middle ear infections and I, I swim all the time. I'm in the water a lot. And sometimes, and so <laughs> it's an old naturopathic trick, but to get an onion and put it there. But actually what I use is I use a garlic clove and I cut it so that it doesn't go in, but I, I cover it with olive oil. Otherwise it can burn the skin. And it's amazing how effective that is for any time I start to develop a middle ear uh, infection or get any kind of earache. What are some of your favorite plants and how do you use them? So, great question. I absolutely love the way you uh, use nature to work with your human self. It is, it's inspiring. Um, and I grew up with this. So I, we could do, we could have this conversation all day. So my favorite, my favorite plant is actually a rhizome. Um, it's ginger. Ginger. Oh. Yeah, I love ginger. Yeah, yeah, ginger. Ginger is, you know, if there was, if someone said you can only pick one herb for the rest of your life, gun to your head, you know, uh, extreme scenario, it, I'm taking ginger with me everywhere. Um, every opportunity I have to shove ginger into my human self and anybody mm -hmm, else, mm -hmm. you're going to get it. Sit still long enough and I'm going to feed you some ginger. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's to me, um, it, it was kind of one of those things, yet again, grandma wisdom. I want to say I was in my early 20s. Um, I was um, working a corporate job and um, I was having muscle spasms, really, really bad muscle spasms. Um, this is still pre-diagnosis, so I did not know I had muscular dystrophy. I didn't understand what was going on. And there was this wonderful uh, Caribbean lady who sat next to me, she worked with me, she was awesome. And she saw me struggling and she brought me some ginger tea. And it was the very first time, I mean, in, by ginger tea, meaning no tea bag at all, just yeah. the ginger roots steeped in water with some honey, that's it. Um, she might've thrown some mint in there, I don't recall, but you know, there was no tea bag to, to just to make the point. Uh, she brought me some ginger tea and kid you not, within probably about 30, 45 minutes, the spasm had let up. Oh, wow. I'd never, right. I'd never had that experience before with anything. Usually I had to get some Bengay and, you know, my family had been shoving bananas in me since I was a kid. And, you know, there were, they, you know, every, and what people weren't understanding is that because of the muscular dystrophy that I have, I dump trace minerals, magnesium and oh, potassium yeah. specific, yeah. Yeah. right? I literally dump them. So I, you know, it doesn't matter how much I put in, my body doesn't know what to do with it. It doesn't metabolize it properly. And it just comes, I excrete it. It comes right back out. So it's always been, you know, this mad dash to try and get enough um, um, magnesium and, and potassium filled food products in me before there was an understanding that you, I wouldn't be able to orally consume as much as I will need because my body does not process it properly. So, you know, it's, it's been a learning growing process, but ginger, um, I have gastroparesis as a result of having muscular dystrophy. So MD is the primary DX, but you know, mm -hmm. there are many, many other things that go along with it because it's just a, a, a progressive degenerative neuromuscular disorder. So it impacts everything that's covered in muscle, even soft muscle, right? So my digestive mm -hmm. tract. Sure, sure. The smooth muscle in there. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. My stomach is impacted. Mm -hmm. So, oh, um, wow. Exactly. My stomach does not process food properly. Um, they did a, a gastric. And ginger is fantastic for digestive issues. Um, you mentioned ginger tea with a little honey, really good for sore throat. If you're in a pinch, you can just take a little chunk of that ginger root and just chew on it for a little bit. Ginger is, is phenomenal. And ginger is an envoy herb and it's also a dispersive herb so anything botanically that you take with ginger it helps to disperse it and if you if you and it's wonderful to cook with you can put it works with salt salty and sweet it does. beautiful it does. one of my favorites okay <laughs> all right i'm on a desert island i get to bring one plant what do you bring it i'm bringing cannabis i am i am so, so uh, there's a food element, there's a fiber element, uh, there is a, <laughs> a 
Lord have mercy if I needed a recreational uh, element to it. There's uh, so many other aspects to it. What are your thoughts on cannabis as a botanical? I'll put you right on the spot here. No, let's listen. Let's get into it. Um, you know, it's interesting because I grew up as a dare kid. I was a, a say no, like the say no to drugs campaign very literally worked on me. Um, and it was it was just a, a lack of knowing. So I, did, I never had an experience that in my youth to try it. Um, I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. None of those things. So when when my muscular dystrophy became more progressive as i got older um and it was being treated with opiates and narcotics and benzos and things of that nature um and and there kind of became this tipping point where i realized one my body i can't sustain this in my human self taking the level of 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 you know pain meds that that i'm receiving i need to transition so my transition came at the behest of my own doctors. Um, they Your really, own MD medical doctor. MD medical doctors in a state, in a place, in a space when it wasn't legal or medical, oh, wow. or recreational or anything else of that nature. Um, and, and these had been my providers for almost a decade at this point, right? They were very involved in my treatment plan and they were very involved in me personally. They, you know, some of them were on the board of directors for my first nonprofit foundation. Oh, so wow. they were, yeah, exactly. There was a very close tie with some of these individuals and they understood the human that I am. And they understood that there literally was just an ignorance that existed. So they kind of cut right through the noise and re went right at me with what they know worked with me, which was straight up facts. Um, and someone put in my hand, the University of Mississippi's, um, one of their early case studies, um, you know, that just really kind of spelled sure. out. What and and was. just for a little background for folks, University of Mississippi has through, I believe it's DEA, always worked with cannabis. It is, and they actually would dispense cannabis to a small number of patients as a federally legal program uh, years before even California became legalized. Thank anyway, you. go ahead, Thank please you. continue. Yeah. Yes to that exact point. And it was me learning that, not in an urban legend scenario, but but reading the actual real life pamphlet that came from the university, genuinely having the ability to, to understand what is this plant? What does it do? What do we know? What are the questions that are remaining? What are the risks? You know, I, I was able to learn all of those things. So my providers encouraged me because the state I was in, it was not medical or recreational at the time. So they encouraged me um, to go to a program uh, at UCLA. Out here, I'm in LA now, I've relocated. But at the time, I lived on the East Coast. Um, I'm a Delaware native. So um, they sent me out here to UCLA. Uh, and I had a, you know, a whole brand new awakening understanding of what is this plant? Uh, how can it be used medicinally? And you know, is there efficacy here? Is this something I should consider in my treatment plan or is this not the right thing for me? Um, and having a conversation with providers at UCLA where they're speaking to me about specific strains, the same way my doctors at Hopkins and Penn and every other you know, hospital on the East Coast had been speaking to me about narcotics and opiates. And, you know, it was mind boggling to me to just be in, in what I know is an equivalent medical institution and get a totally different understanding of how to manage what I had going on in my human self. And the long story longer is I was at UCLA for about two weeks. When I arrived, I was bedridden. I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't walk. I couldn't go to the bathroom by myself. Uh, within about two weeks on that program uh, where they gave me four separate strain, they recommended four separate strains for me a day, um, a sativa, uh, an indica, and two hybrids, morning, night, everything in the middle. Um, within two weeks, I was uh, no longer bedridden. I was up. I was out of my wheelchair. I was taking myself to my own doctor's appointments. I was able to work out sometimes twice a day. Uh, my life changed. It actually, it, real life changed my life. Um, but it was, it was the education. It was the, the actual scientific understanding of what this is and how does it do what it does. Um, and once I knew that, there was no unknowing. 